Hello YouTube, TBT here. Now, my goal in this video is to show you how to set up an IPsec IKE V2 VPN server, as well as to show you how to set up certificates needed for your VPN server and client devices. Now, what you'll need for this tutorial is a setup similar to my own, which is a Raspberry Pi running Diet Pi. Once you have that, you should be good to go. So first we're going to start by updating our Linux distro. So go ahead and app get update. Once that's done, we're going to install StrongSwan and LibSharon extra plugins. So just type what I have on screen. Once that's finished, what you'll want to do is edit etsy slash ipsec.conf. So in my case, I'm using nano, so it's nano slash etsy slash ipsec.conf. Now, once you're in, what you'll want to do is delete everything between the first and the last lines. Once you've done so, simply copy and paste the code that I have below this video. It's labeled ipsec.conf, so everything below that you should copy and paste. Now, there are three things in this segment of the video that I want you guys to take note of. First is left ID. I've set a placeholder called your public IP address. What you should do is replace that placeholder with your public IP address. This way, all your client connected devices will have an IP address to route back to. Next is write DNS. Now in this tutorial, I already have OpenDNS set up, but if you have something else in mind, such as Google DNS, then feel free to change those values. Next is Write Source IP. Now this is a range of IP addresses your VPN devices will be assigned with. If you feel that this IP range will conflict with what is on your network, then feel free to change these values to something more suitable for your network. Once you're done, remember to save and exit. Next, we're going to nano etsy slash ipsec dot secrets. And what we're going to do here is type exactly what I'm typing under the last line. Once you're done, save and exit. Next, we're going to nano etsy slash rc dot local. Next, you'll want to hit the return key a few times just before exit zero. Next, copy and paste the code I have posted below this video underneath the labeling rc dot local. Now with regards to write source IP, 
in the ipsec.config file. If you did change that IP range into something else, then those values should match here as well. Once you're done, save and exit. Next, we're going to nano etsy slash sysctl.conf. And what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the pound sign to enable packet forwarding for IPv4. Once you're done, save and exit. Next, we're going to change over into a different directory path. So, cd etsy slash ipsec dot d. Now, at this point, we're going to create a script that will help to create the certificates needed for both the server and the client devices. So, what we're going to do now is nano cert underscore script. And from there, copy and paste the code posted below under the labeling cert script. Now the main purpose of this script is to acquire the public IP address for your network, as well as to create the certificates and keys necessary for the VPN server and the client devices. Now save and exit. Now at this point, you'll want to turn the script into an executable. So jamad plus x cert underscore script. Once you're ready to run the script, type the command dot slash cert underscore script and hit enter. So at this point, you'll be required to enter a password for your P12 file. Remember this password as you'll need it later. Now that these files were created, you're gonna need a flash drive in order to move the following files off of this machine. We're going to move the client.p12 file because that is the file we'll need to create VPN client connections. For security purposes, we'll also be moving the strongswankey.pem file that is located in a private folder. The reasoning is that if someone were to break into your machine and steal this key, then your VPN setup could be compromised. So when moving the strongswan key from the private folder, it's recommended that you keep this file offline. Or you can just simply delete it and start over the certificate creation process when you need to. And last, we'll be copying the strongswancert.pem file that is located in the CA certs folder. The reasoning is that for iOS devices, we also need to include this certificate along with the client.p12 file. So as a recap, you're moving the client.p12 file, you're moving the strongswan key that is found in the private folder, and you're copying the strongswan cert that is found in the CA certs folder. And with that, we have reached the end of part one of this video. In part two of my next video, we're going to take the client file and the strongswan cert file to create a VPN configuration file for iOS devices. So at this point, all you have to do is reboot your machine and your server should be ready to go on the next restart. At this point, I want to thank you guys for watching this video and I hope that you were able to take something away from this. With that said, feel free to like, share, or comment in this video, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. This is TBT, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.